All right, we're going to take a quick look at uh, R and RStudio. So assuming you've installed R and RStudio, you should be able to open them up on your computer. I'm going to find R. Here it is. Let's just open that up quickly. You might see something like this. It's just an R console. For this course, we will pretty much never be using this version of the program. Um, and I just want to show it to you, so if you think this is what you're supposed to be using, you'll know to use RStudio. But just to give you an example of what uh, we can do here, uh, we can basically enter commands and run them. So you can treat R like a calculator. I'm just going to type 1 plus 1 and press enter and it will give me 2. Or 4 times 5 and we'll get 20. So this is a way to enter commands and have R run those commands. Now let's uh, quit this program. I don't want to save that. And let's take a look at RStudio. So I'll just search for that. Here it is, RStudio. Now what's going to happen, the first time you load it up, it's probably going to look different from mine. Uh, on my computer, what's happened is it's loaded up the last thing I was doing in RStudio. Now the first thing I want you to become aware of is something called an R project. Um, to illustrate how this works, we can go up to the top right hand corner. You'll see this little cube. As you can see, uh, there's a Psych 7709. So this is the current R project that I'm in. What I'd like to do is create a new project. And we can associate that with an existing directory or we can create a new directory. Let's just do new directory, empty project. Let's give it a name, call it test project. And we can uh, use the browse function to say where we want to put this. So let's just put this on the desktop so we can find it. Now we're going to create the project. Essentially what we've done here is created a blank slate. Um, if you were to go on your file system and try to figure out where is this, on a Mac, go to the finder, it's in the desktop, and it is called test project. And so we can see we've created a folder and there's one file in it called testproject.rproj. We're back in RStudio. I'm just gonna quit RStudio and um, go back to the desktop. Let's find that folder test project. I wanna show you what happens if you click this file. What it will do is we'll open up our studio and uh, show you uh, basically something like this. I want to talk briefly about navigating uh, what you're seeing in front of you. Okay. Um, the thing on the left, it's called a console. It's what we were looking at before when we opened up R. In the console, we can type commands like one plus one and press enter and run those commands. Typically, what we'll be doing with our studio is working with a text editor where we can write uh, lists of uh, many different commands in a text file. So let's look at an example of doing that quickly. To create a new file to work with, you can go to this green plus button and we'll open up an R script what our studio does for us is it creates a little text editor. So for example, I could type one plus one right here and um, I got a couple options. Notice if I press enter, I just go to a new line. So I haven't actually run this command yet. If I wanted to run this as a command, I could click the run button and see what happens. Let's run it again. Oops. Oh, it's not doing anything. So some little tricks here. But notice when we hover over, it says run the current line or selection. So we're actually on line two, so it's not doing anything. So if we go back to line one and press run, it's gonna run, essentially copying this line into the console and running it. Another option you have is to 
copy, so I just command C, and I'm pasting it into the console and running it. Um, if you have multiple lines of code, so for example, let's say you wanted to do these three things. If you highlight all of them and press run, it will do all of those things for you. On a Mac, there's also a hotkey. If you have all of your code selected, you can press Command, Return, and it will run all of those things for you. So basically, we just have a text editor here. Um, I want to show you one thing in R. We'll use this a lot. It's called adding a comment. So if you use a hashtag, it turns green. And anything you type, um, this is a comment, basically. So these things don't get run. If you had some code like 1 plus 1 here, or let's do it different. Let's do 7 plus 7. Uh, now if I select all of these things and run them, uh, notice 1 plus 1 gets run, 4 times 5 gets run, 3 minus 2 gets uh, compiled. Uh, but these hashtag things, like for example the 7 plus 7, it doesn't add up to 14. It's just printed out as a comment that R doesn't interpret. And this can be useful, for example, let's just delete all of this. Um, if you want to make notes, adding some numbers, uh, subtracting some numbers. Uh, this is a way to make notes for your code so that you can see what's going on in each of the sections. The green part doesn't get run, the other parts do get run. Um, we created this file and it's currently called untitled1 and it's just existing in R. If we want to save it, let's do that, file save. It's going to ask us where to save it and it's automatically pointing to this test project folder. Uh, so I'm just going to call this test and press save. Now we can see the file is renamed test and it's right here. Uh, let's quit our studio. I just want to show you what it's gonna, what's going to happen if we were to quit, for example, after we saved this. When we reload test project, uh, because we had the test.r file in our text editor, it's going to load back up for us. All right. few other things. Um, you can see the contents of your current folder in the right hand corner. You can, uh, when you make plots in R, you'll be able to see what they look like in this tab. R contains lots of different packages we'll learn about, and you can see the ones that you currently have installed here. There's help files, um, and all sorts of things we'll learn about later. Um, I'm going to do something pretty simple here. Put a number into a variable. So I'm just going to create a variable called a. I'm going to put the number 10 into it. I want to run this line so I can highlight it and press command return. And as you can see, this has occurred in the console. Uh, now what exactly has happened here? Well, we've put the number 10 into a variable called a. If we type just the letter a into the console and press return, it's going to print out the contents. See, it has a number 10 in it. When we create variables and put things into them in R, then we'll be able to see in our environment tab all the different things we've created. So right now it's listing that we've created a variable called a with a 10 in it. If I created another variable, let's say I'm going to put the word hello into it, uh, now we've got two things in our environment. If you click the history tab, you can see, uh, you can go back and look at all the different things that you entered and ran into the console. Sometimes it's helpful to be able to go back and see what you did before. Okay. Um, mentioned this in the last video, but whenever you make a change to a file in the text editor and you haven't saved it, you'll see that the file is turned red. I can do Command S 
and save it and now it's um, back to the black. Now in this course we will not be using these R files very often. Uh, an R file is simply a plain text file with an ending .r. It allows you to write comments and write code. And of course you can uh, run the code that's saved in your script. For the most part, we will be using something called an R markdown document. Let me quickly show you what that looks like. You can ask for a new R markdown document to be created by clicking the green button. Click R markdown, you get to give it a title, so I'll call this test R markdown, press OK. And these documents look a little bit different. Um, to see if your R markdown is working, the first thing to try is to press this knit button. It'll ask you to save it, so you give it a name. And if everything's working properly, um, well, I have mine set up to compile this thing into this viewer here, so we can see the output of this document. And uh, there's a couple different ways to look at it. If we click this button, we can look at it in a web browser. We can see a few things. There's a title, there's plain text where we can write stuff, there's our code, so we can write our code in this kind of document, and we can see the output of the R code. We can include graphs and figures. So using R Markdown documents is a powerful way to combine notes, R code, and the output of R code. In the next video, we'll dive into using R Markdown documents in a little bit more detail.